Hey guys, welcome back to new video. In this video, I will give you five reasons why your code is actually a mess and how you can make it more readable so it really doesn't happen to you anymore that you get back to your code after a month or so and you just think, what the fuck did I do back then? That happened way too many times to me, so I want to help you that it doesn't happen too many times for you as well. Number one is actually you're afraid of using functions in your code. Let's take a look at this code together. Can you quickly tell me why we have that if statement there and why we actually return that if statement? I think if you take a look at it and if you think about it a little bit, then you can tell that. But it's actually it's actually just a simple Boolean condition. It's an OR condition and it's still quite unreadable. So you don't just look at it and you know what it does. No, you actually need to look at it and think about it. Maybe you don't even know what it does. So even for these simple Boolean expressions, what I would suggest to you is actually using a function for that. So the way to fix this would be like this. So even though we have a really simple Boolean expression here, the code is quite unreadable. And you can fix this super easily by just creating a function that returns that Boolean expression and the function name just tells you what this Boolean expression actually means. So in this case I was working on an app where you could toggle the, the camera and there was a little badge next to the camera icon that indicates okay is the camera now enabled or not. And I either wanted to be able to toggle this badge if the camera was already enabled or if we actually have camera permission. So if there is no permission, there is no reason to actually toggle the camera because we don't have permission. And to actually make that more readable, what I did is I created another function. So you can see here how I fixed this problem. I just created a function, can toggle camera, that tells you, okay, this, this Boolean expression actually does nothing else than checking if we can toggle the camera right now. And then the code, the improved code just says, okay, if we can toggle the camera right now, we just return in the onClick function and we don't go on with further code. Number two of the reasons why your code is actually a mess is that you're afraid of using too long function names. And of course, there is some limit to function name length at some point, but you can choose much longer names than, than most people actually think they can. Because what should happen if you choose a long function name that is actually needed to make it understandable. Of course, it should only be as long as necessary, but if it is necessary to make it a long function name, then that's fully okay. So if you take a look at this piece of code, then I don't think it takes you five seconds to actually understand what it does. It just checks, should we show this permission rationale? And if so, yeah, let's show it. This is so readable, it's like a book. So I think you don't really need to stress so much about making your function super short, if that makes it actually understandable, yes, I do prefer that. But if not, like here, I didn't find a better function name for this. I should show rationale on click or so. And then it's totally fine. I just read that and I know what it does. Number three is actually that you use two genius solutions. And I see that especially do, um, I see especially beginners do that, that they think that the code needs to look super genius and super smart. And they are just happy if they find a one line solution for a problem but that's actually not good code. Because the goal of writing code should be that if you get back to that a week later, how quickly can you understand that? At least in the terms of uh, software architecture and software engineering, if you're, if you're doing uh, competitive coding or so, then that's a different thing, but I'm talking about software engineering here. So if you take a look at this code example, can you quickly tell me what it does? I'm sure if you know the FizzBuzz problem, you, you can estimate what it does, but if you don't know it, it's it's really confusing. You don't know why is there a map off? Why do we take the, the zeroth index of that map? It, it's really confusing. Let's take a look at the other piece of code here that actually does the same thing. It's also doing the, it's also solving the FizzBuzz problem, but in a much more readable fashion. So both of these codes work. The first version actually seems super genius, but I wouldn't I wouldn't do I wouldn't use the first version in actual in an actual app because it's just super unreadable and anybody who doesn't know um, what happens there just needs to take a look at that for like a minute two minutes try it out maybe debug it even and then they will understand it if you write it in a readable fashion they won't need to do that and it saves you tons of time in the long run 
Number four of the mistakes that I see people do over and over again, even though this is, I think, pretty obvious, but I see this over and over again, and that is actually not properly formatting your code. So I will now show you the code I showed you previously about the, the good Fizzbuzz code. Take a look here. This time it's actually not properly formatted, and you can directly see how hard this is suddenly to read. So in Android Studio, you have that beautiful shortcut, which is Control, Alt, and L, Use that, it will automatically format your code in a way that is actually perfectly readable. So regularly use that, and especially when it comes to, to spaces, I realize that is that makes a super big difference if you properly use spaces. So you can see here in this code that for these uh, comparisons and modular operators, sometimes I left away these spaces. And I think this makes it really hardly readable. And it's especially very unreadable if you don't have any consistency in it. So if you sometimes leave away the spaces, if you sometimes use these, if you sometimes have an indentation, sometimes don't have an indentation, that just makes it super hard to read. And I can only suggest you to use that shortcut that automatically formats your code. And that will also um, kind of give you an impression of how a well formatted code should look like. And the fifth and final thing that most people actually do wrong and that makes your code a mess is actually using a deep hierarchy. So using deep nesting with whatever it is. And usually you can avoid that pretty easily by using return statements. So let's take a look at this code now. It doesn't matter what this code does. It's, it's just some sample code and it's, it doesn't make any sense. But I want to show you how, how big of a hierarchy you have here. So with every additional level of nesting, you actually make that piece of code more unreadable. And the easy solution, if you have such, such a code structure here, how you can actually make that a lot, a lot more readable is using return statements, as I said, and maybe using some additional functions. So let's take a look at the improved code. And you can see you can just use if conditions to, to check the kind of the opposite condition. And if that, so if the actual condition is not true, you just return and you don't go on in this function. And if, if you didn't return, you know that condition was actually the condition you wanted to check for, but you avoid that level of nesting. So you see with this new approach, you actually have only one level of nesting at max. So you now see how readable that is. If condition A is false, then we just return, we don't go on. Then we do something A, then we check if condition B is false. If it is, then we don't continue in this function. And if it is true, we just go on and we divide by zero, whatever that should do here. But it, I just want to show you how this makes our code more readable here. The function stuff here is optional. I use that to show you that functions can really make your code more readable. Um, but here in this example, it would depend if you need that divide by zero code again or not. Um, it would also be totally fine to take the, the content here of this divide by zero function and put it in the actual function. It really depends on what you call your function, what the responsibility of it is. So I hope those five reasons why your code is a mess actually helped you to improve your code quality. If so, then you will definitely also love my Android Kotlin newsletter, my email newsletter, which you can subscribe to for absolutely nothing. You will get regular Android and Kotlin advice right into your inbox on a weekly basis, which, will, which you can only benefit from. So hit the link down below and subscribe for that and to your email and then you're already in my list. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video and have an amazing day. Bye bye.